Welcome to a wash with colour from Inch Strand on the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry. This beach is four miles long and one of the most famous in Ireland. As a film location it has been immortalised in movies like Far and Away and Ryan's Daughter. Later in the programme I'll be heading down a country road with one of the all-time greats of country music, George Hamilton IV, as we compose a theme in watercolours. The intricate coastline of the Dingle Peninsula is arguably the most spectacular in Ireland. Here on the North Shore is just one beautiful sandy beach after another. Mountain ranges run the whole length of the Dingle Peninsula like a backbone. From Sleeve Mish in the east to Brandon and Mount Eagle on the western edge. Here's that country road I was talking about and my guest, George Hamilton IV. George, I know you're no stranger to Ireland. You've been doing a tour now for quite a while with Sandy Kelly. What's that all about? Well, Sandy uh, stars in a musical play about the life of Patsy Cline and she recommended me to be the narrator in it, the storyteller. And she often teases me and tells me the only reason I'm in the show is to waffle while she changes costumes and puts a new wig on or something. <laughs> and did you know Patsy Klein personally? I did. I had the privilege of touring with her in uh, the late 50s. I knew her in the early stages of her career. And believe me, she didn't open the doors for ladies in country music. She kicked them down. She was a powerful lady. Traveling light. Traveling light, just moving on down the road and traveling light. Was there always music in your family as a child, or where did the interest in music come from? My grandfather was a real hillbilly from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, and he moved down out of the mountains to work for the railroad. That's how I became a city billy instead of a, sort of a hillbilly. Um, I used to sit on his knee and play with his railroad watch, and he'd. Uh, Take out those old 78 records by Jimmy Rogers, the singing Brakeman, and Gene Autry, and uh, Roy Acuff, and the Smoky Mountain Boys. And he had a wind up uh, Victrola, and he'd wind it up and put the 78s on there. And I sat on his knee and learned to love country music because of him. And what age were you then whenever you got into the music scene itself and the record industry? I started recording, believe it or not, in 1956, uh, 45 years ago this year. Is those were the days when Elvis was on the scene and Buddy Holly, you know, and Gene Vincent. And I was touring around the country with those guys and on what they call rockabilly shows. In the late 50s, if you were from the South and played a guitar and said y'all, you know, they called you a rockabilly. Sam Cooke and Clive McFadder uh, were great artists, of course, but they also loved country music. And I remember we used to tour all of us together on a couple of Greyhound buses. So it was the common denominator for us. We all became friends through music. And it was when I first realized, Dormant, that music's really a bridge between uh, cultures and races and people from different backgrounds. We, we had something in common that we all loved and we got along great. You then got involved with the Grand Ole Opry. Yes. You must have met a lot of interesting people there. Well, the Grand Ole Opry is the longest running radio program in the history of broadcasting. It's been on the air now since 1925, 75 years. I joined the Opry in 1960, so I've been a member now for 40 years. Uh, sometimes I feel like a creature from Jurassic Park. Uh, but the Opry is kind of the mother church of country music, you know. It, it's the love of my life, really. That and my wife, of course. <laughs> What are you working on at the minute? Sandy Kelly and I have been uh, working on an Irish folk album. Her husband Michael is producing it and uh, we've been recording it in Ballina on the west coast. 
album of Irish folk songs called On an Irish Country Road. And uh, we've been at it now for about four years, so I'm hoping it'll see the light of day soon. You know, about ready to get it out there. Well, tell me, have you ever painted before? I can remember back when I was about six or seven, when I first started grammar school, my teacher put a, an easel up with a poster board on it and gave us a little brush and some watercolors and said, get on with it, kids, you know. And that's the last time I've, I've ever attempted to paint, and it's been 50-some years now, so I'm a little nervous about all this. <laughs> Well, hopefully now it'll not be much longer till I have you painting. All right. <laughs> Just later today. <laughs> I'm and looking forward to it. I have an easel set up for you as well. Really? And it's on an Irish country road. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you'll be the teacher this exactly. time. Exactly. Huh? Now, I can't promise you the Blue Ridge Mountains or the Shenandoah Valley, but I can promise you the Dingle Peninsula All and right. some fantastic All scenery. Right. I'm sure that'll be beautiful. I've never been there before. This Ocean World Aquarium in Dingle houses a marvellous array of underwater life and is a true celebration of the diversity of life beneath the waves. It is thanks to the support and cooperation of the local inshore and deep sea fishermen that this huge collection of marine life can be experienced by the public. This little pier at Dunquin village is the gateway to the Blasket Islands, about a mile and a half off the coast. The seven islands are still alive with the stories and culture of their inhabitants, even though the last of them left for the mainland in 1953. There are seven Blasket Islands in all. The largest, Great Blasket, has an extraordinary cultural heritage, which lives on in the songs and literature created by its former inhabitants. The best known are the island man, 20 years ago, grown, and the life of Peg Sayers. The western edge of the Dingle Peninsula is Ireland's early Christian heartland. There are more ancient sites here than anywhere else in the country. Some have hardly changed with the passing centuries. Galrus Oratory is one of the best preserved early Christian church buildings in Ireland. Its design was based on an upturned boat. Built of unmortared stone, it is still watertight after more than a thousand years. 